Welcome to my January 17th, creating photos and videos. I, I'm off schedule again. And I won't even go into the reasons why, but um, hopefully this is a better restart this time. Yeah, so this is uh, the episode that I intended to record two days ago on Tuesday. I'm recording today. And it is focused again on Cinemaker. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this piece of software, this app for iOS devices. It, uh, I just think it has an incredible potential for, for one-man bands like me and for a lot of other applications as well. But I, I continued, even though I was not having good luck getting uh, a, an episode out in December, I continued to work with Cinemaker until the holidays took over, and then I picked it up again you know, a week or so ago. And my issues were audio and video, as I mentioned earlier in earlier episodes. Uh, and, and it was Cinemaker I was having trouble with. But long story short, the problem was mine. It was a user error, as is very often the case with technology, the new technology that you're working with. And I have to say, I really um, want to thank and applaud the folks at Cinemaker. It's a small company. Uh, and so I was getting help from uh, a, a variety of people and, and included Benjamin Nowak, who's the founder and CEO of Cinemaker itself. And so... Benjamin and I talked on the phone once, we exchanged lots of emails, and I was having trouble with the video being going wonky on me and, and, and something stalling out and freezing, and then the video would go wonky and just be all pixelated, and so it just wasn't acceptable. Um, and after trying several different things and his mentioning my iPad 3, he thought I was using it as the... The, the home for the director pad. And, and Gary Baker, another a, a vice president of Cinemaker, had already advised me that probably wasn't a good idea, but I figured I could use it as a camera. It turns out the iPad Mini 3 was what was causing the problem. It was, it was creating a drag somehow so that um, it would stall the software, and then when it came back, it would, the, the images were all messed up. And so if I, I took it out of the mix altogether. So today I'm using my iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is my, my director pad home. In other words, the controlling station. And I've got my iPhone 10s as my main camera with a mic attached to it. And then I have my iPhone 6s Plus as a second camera. So I'm only using two cameras today. And uh, I haven't sold my 10.5 iPad Pro, and I might just take it out of the box because it's all packed up to send to whoever bought it, and nobody bought it. I may just take it out of the box and use it as a third camera in, in this arena until somebody decides they want to buy it. Okay, so let's go back to the 10s as my primary camera. And in, in this whole process, though, I did learn and get a better understanding of how Cinemaker connects the devices that are on its, you know, are, that it's uh, working with. And essentially, it, it, when you want to use it in a wireless environment, you're using Wi-Fi. And so the way I have these connected today is I have my little SanDisk uh, media drive. I have it plugged in a couple feet away from here. And each of the devices, these three devices, are connected to it and to the hotspot that it creates. So they're all in their own little network. They're not being interfered with. And they, nobody else is using that network, if you will. So it uh, should be strong, and I shouldn't get any lag, and I shouldn't get any you know, stalls or freezes. The other way is just you know using my home network. But I'm in the basement, and our router is uh, on the third floor. I mean, the second floor, so three floors up from the basement. And although I do have repeaters in the, in the house, Sometimes I get a weak signal down here. So that's why I'm using the, the media drive as opposed to just using my home Wi-Fi. But you could do that. But let's pretend you don't have any, any Wi-Fi at all. You're out in the jungle, you're out in the ocean, wherever, and you fire up director pad and the camera assistance on the iPhones that you're gonna connect to it. And they will find the iPad. And it's through a peer-to-peer -peer networking um, relationship. So that will work too. I mean, the media drive would also work if I had that on a ship with us and we were on a, on a cruise or if I, we were out on a beach someplace and I wanted to do a, a video, I could use that as a, uh, um, a hotspot because it'll it has a battery and it will normally run without power being, being plugged into power, but it seemed to be a little bit uh, weak today, so I plugged it in just to make sure it worked. Okay, so I learned how that works. 
But yet there's a third way, uh, I guess really a second way, a wired connection. You know, the wireless, I'm, I've just ex described two different ways to do it. But there's also a third way, and that is using Ethernet cables and, a, and a, with all the devices connected together through a router. And it's and what I learned is it's best if it's a router that has a dynamic uh, uh, a DHCP server in, in its innards. And so it's assigning IP addresses in the 192 range, for example. I was connecting and experimenting with that with my uh, old uh, hub a five port hub that I have. Well, a hub is not an intelligent device. It just connects things. And it's, it, it, it doesn't, uh, it, it just sends data throughout the whole little network that's created by it. And it worked fine for some things, but using that combined with my iPad mini three was really just not, I was not getting a good, good experience at all. And that's what was the problem in December. Additionally, you can add cameras that will take an HDMI, that will produce an HDMI output, a clean HDMI output. And by clean, I mean that it doesn't send all the information that's on the screen when you're recording a video. It just, rec it just sends the video, the clean video. And so I wanted to try that with my Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II camera because it supposedly sends out clean uh, video or a clean HDMI signal. Turns out it really doesn't, not completely. And so uh, I'm looking at another solution to, for that. That's what got, that's what kind of raised the whole issue of the, to the top of the router because when I connected, even though the, uh, the three uh, devices being connected, or the, the, the two iPhones and the iPad being connected. Once I connected the camera, and in order to connect the camera, you have to have an HDMI cable coming from the camera and going into an encoder HDMI converter, or uh, encoder HDMI connect camera adapter. And so I had that. I bought bought that. That was that was not an inexpensive piece of equipment, but I bought that, and w w I knew the box worked. You know, and, and Mr. Nowak from Cinemaker assured me the box worked before they sent it to me because I bought it from them. And then it go, it, you connect the encoder via an Ethernet cable to the router, or in my case, to the hub. And it wasn't working. And the reason it wasn't working is because it was not being assigned automatically an IP address that was going to make everything work together. And so that prompted me then to buy a, a proper router. So I, and if, ironically, I just had given away a whole bag of ra old routers that uh, we had retired over time. I gave it away for a yard sale uh, fundraiser only a couple months ago. But so anyway, I ordered a new, a new used or refurbished router. So when I got that, it had five ports, or it has four ports rather, and an uplink port. And I uh, connected everything together and they all worked fine. So I'm not connected that way today. I am using just this, the, the Wi-Fi connection. So it, it, it's been a learning experience and, and I happen to enjoy these kinds of things. Other people might get really frustrated. I was frustrated, but I knew that there was a solution and, and I was getting help. And the most important message of today's episode is I was getting help from Cinemaker and the importance of companies that are selling either hardware or software, apps and so on, providing good support to make the user feel like they're being helped if they're having trouble is so important. And Cinemaker's not the only one that I've had experience with recently that has done that. And the two others that come to mind are uh, Luma Touch with their, their wonderful mobile editing app, Luma Fusion. Terry Morgan, who's one of the principals and Chris Demetris, they, they, they both are active on their, their forums, their support forums, and answer questions and, and follow up in emails. And that's, that's phenomenal. And um, the same with Filmic Pro. The Filmic Pro team is very supportive. Uh, Kevin Buonagari, I think is, is his name, I never can pronounce it quite right, is uh, one of those people, Bonagorio uh, is also one of those folks who is part of the production team of the software and is also part of the support system. You know, he's, he's active on Facebook, responds to questions and so on. It, it's, it's so vital. 
for software companies and hardware companies to provide some decent level of support. And when they go above and beyond, as these three companies have, it's even more exciting to, to try to use their um, equipment and try to think of create, I shouldn't say try to use it, but to use their equipment or to use their software and come up with creative ways to use it. And that's, that's really what today's message is. The whole thing with Cinemaker has been exciting and, and I'll, I'll, in a future episode, I'll, I'll exper um, experiment with, with you, I'll show you connect, connection, connecting a real camera that's connected via HDMI to the network and using Ethernet to connect uh, um, all the devices. And presumably with Ethernet, you're going to get, you know, no, because the router is not connected to anything else, it's just creating this network. You're not going to get any interference and you should get a much stronger signal and therefore you're going to get better video. The audio in this case is coming through a wireless mic, but I'll, again, I'll talk about that later. It's something new I'm experimenting with. And I retired my Saramonic wireless mic and, and, and replaced it with something else. And I'm so far very happy with it. This is the first time I've actually used it to record an episode. And I am recording on my uh, uh, Olympus recorder just as kind of backup. So uh, if the audio somehow is not working right, I'll have that as something I can sync the video with. So this has been a, uh, an adventure and it's an adventure with a happy ending because I have a working situation here now with at least two cameras and this uh, and the iPad uh, running the show. And so I'll continue to experiment with different ways that I want to use it. I have ideas for when I'm doing my learning photography episodes that I want to I add to that library of, of episodes. And I want to have multiple cameras on me so I can walk around. And then this wireless mic makes that also possible to do. And so we'll see how that all works out. So again, a little bit late, but thank you very much for checking in. And I'll uh, look forward. I'm not going to tell you when the next one's going to be, but you know when it should be. So hopefully you'll come and join me. Thank you very much for tuning in to Creating Photos and Videos. Goodbye.